All right, what I'd like to do is show you how to uh, determine if each one of these equations, when you have a function y in terms of x. So whenever you're determining, remember, a function in terms of x, what we need to make sure that we have is one value, um, one value for our, our input goes to only one value in the output. So if we're going to look at this, when it terms of, in terms of a function in terms of y in terms of x, what we need to do is I'm going to solve for y. And for each one of these, I want to isolate my y to get it all by itself. So I'll subtract an x here, and I get y equals a negative x plus 9. And what this tells me now is for every term, for every x, I have a unique y. Because if x equals you know, 1, I'm just going to add, add 9 to it, and I'd get a you know, 8. But every single term is unique for my y. So since my output, I have unique terms for every input x, this is a function of y in terms of x. If I look here, here when I'm going to solve for, f, for y, I subtract an x squared, I get y squared equals a negative x squared plus 1. And here, if I just kind of switch those around, I get y squared equals x. Now, these two equations are different than these two because now to solve for y, what I have to do is take the square root on both sides. And whenever you take the square root on both sides, remember the square root of a number, if I was just going to take the square root of 4, that could be 2, or the square root of 4 could also equal negative 2. Because remember, 2 squared is, you know, the opposite. Remember, the square root is what two numbers uh, multiply to give you your, your radicand. So um, 2 squared equals 4, as well as negative 2 squared equals 4. So therefore, my answer here is actually going to be a plus and a minus square root of x squared plus 1. Here, plus and a minus square root of x. Since I have two values for my x, for my y, see I have a positive and an x. Whenever I have two values, so it says find which functions in terms of x, I'm sorry, find the function y in terms of x that are a function. Well, since my x's, I have two values for x for each y, this, these are not, you could not write these as a function of, um, for y in terms of x. Here, however, every x value is going to give me a unique y value, so therefore that's why that one works.